Hi guys, I'm and welcome back to my channel and this new series that I call Journey to Med where I'm trying my best and my very hardest to help prospective medical applicants achieve their dreams and their goals by getting into medical school. Um, so today, if you haven't seen last the previous video that I've done, which was the first part of the abstract reasoning answering the questions live, this video is going to be the second part. So if you haven't seen the first part, please go see the first part first and then just come back to this video where I'm just going to be continuing walking you through the abstract reasoning question. If this video and this content interests you, please subscribe to my channel, like this video so I know that you enjoyed the content, and if you have any further questions, you can always contact me through DMs on Instagram or leave a comment down below. So now that all of this is out of the way, let's get into the video. And now we're moving on to a set A, set B question. It's a bit of a different set A, set B question because this time, um, rather than having you know a big shape here and asking if it belongs to set A, set B, or neither, this time it's asking which one of these four shapes belongs to set A. So, but regardless of that, I would still not look at the question first. I would look at the both of these sets and try to understand how they work. So the first thing that I'm going to see here is that both of these sets have a like. Um, main shape in, in the middle which is made out of a big circle like a big oval with a smaller oval that looks like a head and a body and that you would add a number that maybe like one to three uh, little uh, triangles at the bottom uh, equilateral tri triangles at the bottom and that's something that would be similar to both of them so then now that i know that i would be like okay but how are both of these sets different so I would look at this shape here and this shape here because they only have one color at the bottom. And I know that from the fact that I had this really long list, I knew from the get-go that it has to do with color for sure because it has to do with color. Like you can just see it. I know it doesn't make, maybe not make sense, but once you've practiced enough, you would know that this is something to do with the color of these triangles. So I would look at first this box and then this box because they both have a different color and so I can exactly understand what does what is set A. So set A is telling me that when there is a white triangle at the bottom you need to have a kind of added shape to the main shape which is constituted of a line and a dot at the other extremity and it's the line that is touching the main shape. See the line touches the main shape and then there's another white dot at the other extremity. However, when it's a black triangle, see the black triangle here, um, at the bottom of the main shape, you would have to have a white dot that touches the main shape. And at the other side of the white dot, you would have a zigzag line. So that is the pattern for set A. On set B, what I would be looking at, I would look at this shape because it only has a white triangle. And then I would look at this shape because it only has black triangles. Um, so again, it's to do with the color. So the white triangle here, I'm seeing that if it's a white triangle, it has a, like a curved line that touches the main shape. And then the other opposite end, there's a white dot. Wh however, when it's a black triangle, it would be a straight line that touches the main shape with a, a white dot at the other extremity. And I'm also seeing that if the number, that's for both sets, the number of triangles at the bottom Will, ex will tell you how many added shapes you will add to the main shape. And I'm just gonna put on my glasses because my eyes are starting to hurt, so yeah, sorry about that because now there's gonna be the blue thing, but you know. Let's go in, going back to that. So now that we have the, the pattern, we can actually look at the question, the question options. So they are asking us which one belongs to set a. So what we're seeing here is that for all options, we have two black triangles and one white triangle. So this means that we're looking for a shape that has, um, as we see here, two white dots that are added that are touching the main shape with a zigzag. So two white dots that are touching the main shape with a zigzag. And then one straight line that touches the main shape with another added dot at the other extremity, which is telling me that this is B. The reason why A doesn't work is because this is
this dot never touches the main shape. And in both of in the three of them, it touches the main shape. So that doesn't work. So you would have to choose A. For this one, for set A, you would need to have set A and set like A and B don't work because two triangles would mean the same thing. And both of these patterns are different. So that doesn't work. And then uh, if you look back at this shape, you would see that if it's a white triangle, you would need a straight line that touches the main shape. And so here you have two straight lines, here you have squiggly lines, so that doesn't work, so it's C. In this one here for set A, again, same thing, it would be A because it's straight lines that have to touch, not squiggly lines, and it's not the heads that have to touch, so A. Again, for set A, here is three black triangles. Black triangles means that it's the little dots that should touch and not the other way around. Okay, so now we're moving on to another type of question, which is another type of question again, which is uh, the question which is like, this box is to this box the same way that this box is to this box. Um, and so the, again, what I do is that I would just look at the, um, I would first look at the patterns first before actually trying to find out the answer. Um, and I would also work by process of elimination here. So here you can see that there's a white circle and a like black quarter of circle in the corner here and here we have a black rectangle with like a white quarter of rectangle in a corner as well and then we see that this one when it goes it transforms transforms into the fact that this little piece here actually becomes white and not black like it was before and if you look in the opposite like just if you look at the shape the shape now has two colors before it was just white and now it's like white and black and the black is just in front of the white that was kind of taken away. It looks like as if this white part here, you took off a quarter of that circle that you stuck into the upper corner, in the upper right corner. And so here we're going to try to find the same thing in the question option. So we know that this little quarter of rectangle here has to change color. It has to go to black. So if we look at the the options, we see that only A and B and C actually change to black. So B and D are out. Then what we saw is that we need to have black and then the opposite color, white, on the opposite side. And we have to have like the majority here that stays white and just the, you know, just um, a quarter of it becomes black. So here we would want the majority of it to stay white uh, to stay black, sorry, and then just a little piece of it would become white, and that white piece would be just in front or just, you know, opposite of the black piece. And that corresponds exactly to option C. And again, we have a, a this box is to this box, the same as this box is to this box. So we can see here that we have nine parallelograms with a black uh, shaded parallelogram in the top right corner. And here we have nine, the same number of shapes, but just on like nine rectangles with a shaded, uh, with a like black rectangle in the bottom left corner. And here when you see in the is2 box, the black that was shaded in the beginning stays black. So this black here will have to stay black in the next box. And you see that you have two polka dots, two polka dots, and then two grays. So you would want to have black here, two polka dots, two polka dots, and then one gray. So horizontally polka dots, vertically polka dots, and then diagonally gray. So if you look at the options, you see he, you choose B because that's where you can see that it's black, horizontal polka dots, vertical polka dots, and then diagonal um, gray. So that's the way it is. Then here that's again a sequence question. Um, and so the way that I usually look at sequence questions, if I find the pattern, you know, rather than just trying to find out which ones are the most similar and then just guessing like I talked about previously, um, I usually just, especially in these sequence patterns where there's a lot of different shapes, I would just follow one shape. So here I'm just going to follow this uh, white triangle here, which starts in the top left corner. Then it moves to the bottom left corner, so it goes bam, then it goes back up and then back up. So it goes bam, up, up. So it would be 
expected for it to go back down because that's just how it goes. You know, it went from up, down, up, up. So this now it has to go down. So let me find which ones have um, a triangle, white triangle in the bottom here. And if we look at the options, we see that C, and, I mean B and C both have um, a white triangle that's in the bottom. We also see that the first line here is exactly the same. So to find out if it's B or C, we're going to have to follow another shape. And so let's just follow this black rectangle here. So the black rectangle in the sequence starts here. Then it moves down one, then it moves again down one, and then to the left by one. So you would expect it to go up one, which is exactly what we see here in B. Now, if you want to just confirm this, let's just follow, let's say, the pentagon here. The pentagon starts at the bottom. It goes to the right, one, to the left, sorry, one, up, one, so up one, and then another up one. So you would expect it to go back to the right. And that's exactly what we see here. So actually, this pattern works in like two separate entities. There is this line that goes, that works in up and down, like you know, down, up, up, down, up, up, this way. And this line that works in a, this way, like one, two, three, da, 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 da. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So it goes like kind of a, ch a chain and always moves by one clockwise. So, you know, once you figure this out, you know that it's B. Now, the last, the penultimate question we have, again, is a sequence question. So for this sequence question, I'm just going to look at the top left corner, which is composed of a rectangle that has kind of a, a side that's white, that is separated into like two right angled triangles, which is one that's white and one that's black. And you can see that from one box to the other, the square stays in the top left corner, but it rotates by 90 degrees. So here, you would expect this to rotate again by 90 degrees in a clockwise position. And so you would expect it to like turn 90 degrees to the right. And if you, if you turn this one to the right, it would correspond to the B. So that's option B. Basically, that's all you need to look at because you only have this option here. All of the rest are all different for the squares. And then the last one is you have this one is two, the same as this one is two. So you would see that we kind of have like a pizza idea here with like pizza slices. So this staple will move one pizza slice up. And so since we have one staple, like a kind of a shape that's not finished because you're missing an edge for it to be a rectangle, you could think and you could assume that this shape here corresponds directly to this shape here because this one is not finished either you would need another edge to make it a triangle whereas both of these shapes are finished shapes so this v here would have to move up one pizza slice so it ha would have to be here in the answer option so if you look at the answer options we only have b and d that have the this shape in the correct pizza pizza slice and then the other thing you want to look at is the fact that this triangle here moves by symmetry, by central symmetry, or like just by symmetry, from this pizza slice to the opposite one on the other side. So this one would have to move again by central symmetry the same way. Um, so it would have to be here. And if you look at the answer options between B and D, you would see that B is the one where you have the, tri the, the star in the correct pizza slice. Okay, so I'm done answering all of these questions from the question bank of uh, abstract reasoning. I hope that you enjoyed this video, this little format that's a bit different. I was able to help you and walk you through how I actually approach abstract reasoning questions. If you enjoyed these type of videos, please let me know down below or contact me through DMs on Instagram. If you want to watch other videos that I've made, I have a whole other list of videos in my Journey to Med playlist where I talk to you about the UCAT, the BMAT, the personal statement work experience, and also there's just a lot of other videos on their way for this channel. So if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel um, and like this video and I guess that I'm done for today I'll see you guys next Saturday 